you don't have to get back to me. It's Chad Bovenkamp. Chad with the Fidel Castro hat met you Tuesday night. Uh, I wore the hat for the duration of the conference in support of you leaving, man. Logan Paul. Yeah. Enough said. Good on you, man. Later. Hey, Mark. It's Jerry Peluso and Giovanni. Uh, I think you remember us. We met in Pasadena. Anyway, uh, G, I told Gio that you walked out of the conference, and I told him why. And he absolutely said he cannot stand that guy. Uh, and for the exact same reasons that you walked out, he, you know, he thought that was messed up about the uh, suicide forest. Uh, anyway, I uh, just wanted to share that. You have our support. And don't worry, don't feel bad one bit about what you did. You did the right thing. Gio said uh, you should have stayed and knocked them out first and then left. Okay, man. Have a good one. Hey, everyone. I'm Mark Sargent, and this is Flat Earth Q&A emails number 94, where you send me your Flat Earth questions and comments to msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net, and I will do my best to answer them. And I'm going to be doing these, I've, I've rededicated myself to the cause in this department, and I'm going to do them every day until I get caught up with my emails, and hopefully uh, it won't turn cyclical and I get just as many more emails as I'm reading, because it seems to turn out like that most of the time, but we're going to keep doing this and we're going to we're going to try to do some of the more uh, some of the more recent ones first and then go to the bottom of the list and so i'm going to be kind of jumping around so if you hear some different time frames that's the reason why so i'm not going to stick in in september but let's get right to it first one and and not all these are going to be conference based obviously uh the first one is called respect Oi, Mark, better to email than in your comments as I don't want to make things worse. Can't tell you how proud I am of you right now. If you would have stayed, they would only give you... <laughs> Holy crap. Jesus H. Effing Christ, I would have flipped if the homo teeny bop a troll that came, had came my way. Again, he's British, right? Mate, he's too stupid. This subject, we don't want him or need him. You did the right thing for F.E., brother. No mistake there. Good luck with the fallout, and I hope Patricia understands. Peace and love from F.E.B. Oi, and that's from Martin Leedke out in the U.K. Thank you very much for that, Martin. Uh, this one's called I'm With You But Sad Too. Hi, Mark. Met you at the VIP Mixer. I'm the blonde from Idaho who goes to meetups with Kip from D13 Watchmen. My son wanted a picture of me with you, so I'm sad I didn't do it that night. Thank you for standing up for your principles. Even though I'm disappointed that you won't be in the lineup, you did the right thing. My son, me, son told me to tell you that you should ever want a tattoo. He will give you one for free. He's been an artist for 20 years and owns two shops. He's a big one. Uh, his big one is on Capitol Hill with 12 artists. Artful Dodger Tattoo. He's known as Lucky, although I refuse to call him that. I gave him his name, darn it. His name is real name is Chris. Take care and keep it flat, Cynthia. Thank you very much, Cynthia. This one's called Question. Hi, Mark. I've been studying FE for almost eight months, and I'm a believer with lots of questions. It's been said that the Antarctic perimeter is roughly 60,000 miles around our flat Earth. What's preventing anyone from crossing that protected barrier at a point uh, with no treaty guards? And that's from Clayton out of Smith Falls, Ontario. Uh, no, look up the Antarctic Treaty. It is no joke. There, in fact, there's a whole bunch of videos on the Antarctic Treaty, and below the 60th parallel, anywhere you go, you're going to be met with military. Plain and simple, but look it up if you get a chance. This one's called F.E. Freebies. Mark, I'm listening to Strange World 43. Can I get the Throne of God PDF from Dale, the air traffic controller? Thanks. Lash Rack. Yep, absolutely. And I sent that to him. This one's called... Hang on. 
Uh, Flat Earth of Series Vid stops at 3 minutes 52 seconds. Hi, Mark, and thank you so much for all your work. We have watched them all. Did you know that uh, video 9 of your Flat Earth Clues series stops at 3 minutes 52 seconds? Freezes and looks corrupted. Would love to hear the rest. Can you take a look or email me that vid or the transcript? I feel like I was left in suspense. Thank you, Kim and Vince. Uh, I'm real name Kim Chastain. Uh, yeah, I, I actually took care of that, and there was nothing wrong. It just jammed up on their side. Every once in a while, for whatever reason, YouTube buffers things out. I've seen this with just about every video you could ever think of. You could watch a video a hundred times, and maybe five or six times you're watching it, and all of a sudden you'll start getting the swirling, you know, spinning wheel of death, and it's just buffering on YouTube's side. There's nothing wrong with the videos, and, and I've got, plus the Flat Earth clues are everywhere, so I would have heard about it by now, but thank you. Thank you very much for that. This one's called Urgent Purpose of Our Flat Earth Questions for my local school or my school paper. Uh, hi, Mark. I'm a student currently doing a research for my school paper on flat earth. I've watched many videos, including yours, and I'm curious about this. To me, I am still curious as to why people care so much as to why the earth is flat or not and why are people so against the idea of earth being flat. What is the motivation behind finding out why the Earth is really flat? What impact does it have on me or anyone on this planet to know whether or not the Earth is flat? Why is the government so desperately trying to cover up the truth from us? You guys know the rest of these, right? And why is the entire theory such a controversial topic? I really hope I would get a reply from you because it would be good to hear directly from someone as well educated about this issue. My paper is due on the 20th of, Nemo of November. Uh, she sent that yesterday, so I did respond, uh, because if you're, I mean, come on, three days, it's crunch time, you, you gotta call me or something, it's good I caught this, so it would be nice to hear, if you, hear from you by then, thank you so much, best regards, Valentina, and I did write her back with all the responses to those questions, of course, the biggest one is uh, probably spirituality, which is... Uh, when you find out about flat earth, it opens up everything else. It, you become, you don't become this tiny little insignificant little piece of rock flying through a, an impossible universe. You have purpose. You have motivation. There's a reason for you being here. And this place was built specifically for you. So there you go. This one's called Documentary. Mark, getting on a plane and heading back to the Northwest. I bought the documentary while waiting for the delayed flight. Much better than I thought and professionally done. Yes, it's not where the group is today and is more about your journey, but I can relate and feel most flat earthers will too. I also saw your response on why you left. I respect you, uh, your choice, and you were missed. But just like any good teacher, your students took over and did a great job. Uh, thanks, Paul Duckworth. I, look, I wasn't exactly trying to do the whole uh, coach getting thrown off the court type thing, deliberately trying to get thrown off the court to, to motivate people. I was not trying to do that. If it turned out that way, great, fantastic. Uh, I was actually pleasantly surprised to see ODD show up uh, in, because he said he wasn't going to be there, and I know he's got a problem with me, which is weird because unlike Logan Paul, I've never done anything uh, to, you know, I, I just constantly, everything I do is for the community all the time, including this. Uh, this was a statement for the community, not just me. Yes, I, do I have a personal beef with what Logan Paul stands for? Yes, I do. But I wouldn't have done it if I really thought it would hurt the, the community. I, this was all about trying to send a message, which is we don't need hateful, horrible, destructive people like him anywhere near us. Flat Earth is about positivity. It is about uh, being constructive and you know all those great things. And having him there was the exact opposite. And I was not getting, I, I, I would not be able to sit si silent. I'm sorry. Uh, there's a few things I did pick up from my father. One of them was when he said, uh, don't just stand there and do nothing, do something. And that's what I did. So thank you for that, Paul. And I'm glad you liked the documentary, by the way. If you guys don't know already, it was released at the first day of the conference. So behind the curve, you can actually go now. It's, it's releasable. It's streaming on all the, all the major streaming fonts. I don't know if you can buy a DVD copy that you can give out for Christmas, but I know you can give out the electronic copies for Christmas. And I know I'm, my mom's probably buying like a dozen of them so she can send them all the family members. But you can check it out at behindthecurvefilm.com. Uh, so there you go. Uh, this one's called Nashville Meetup. Can be read on air. 
First, uh, Mark, first of all, after finding out the background on Logan Paul, I can say I completely understand why you walked out of the conference. Uh, you stood by your principles, and I appreciate that. Having said that, if you get time in your show to announce our Facebook meetup group based in the Middle Tennessee area, I would greatly appreciate it. We don't currently have a date set up for a meetup, but that's the purpose for the group once we have enough interest. It is a closed Facebook group, and we have about 12 members so far, and we would love to have more from the Nashville, Tennessee area to network with. The name of the group is called the Nashville Flat Earth Meetup. Thanks for bringing integrity to the Flat Earth community and for all you do, and that's from David. Yep, there you go, David. And you know what? I will save that one off, and I will also read it during Strange World so that hopefully you guys get some more people out there. That'd be kind of fun. Uh, let's see, this one's called Forward Watch Logan Paul, a flat earther question mark on YouTube. I'm getting a lot of these, as you can imagine. Hi, Mark. It's Alma. Big surprise to hear what happened. I left on Thursday morning since I had to get back to work. I am sharing the video Flat Earth Doctrine posted about Logan Paul's testimony. You, pro testimony. you probably already seen it. Remember, any publicity is good publicity. Keep it flat. Uh, I disagree on that one. Not all publicity is good publicity. If the person, yes, if a person is a celebrity, it does help you most of the time, unless they're a controversial celebrity, unless they're toxic. And if they're toxic, they don't help you. It's kind of a push. Yeah, you might get a few people there. And again, yeah, the headlines may generate more to Flat Earth, but it's not the headlines we really want. Uh, not to take it too far, but it's kind of like, uh, let's say, for example, I'll, I'll take it to the extreme here. Let's say a producer came forward to Flat Earth and wanted to produce flat, you know, a Flat Earth television show. We're like, right on, that's great, fantastic. And then you find out later, much later, that it's Harvey Weinstein. What do you do then? Uh, not all publicity. He's, he's powerful. Money, connections. But he is too toxic. To, to, to touch and actually i'm waiting to see not to drag this out i'm waiting to see on month tomorrow monday if mainstream media actually cover logan paul at this conference or did they stay away from him? remember mainstream media tend to do their reference checks and most of the time their interns be like oh yeah you don't want to do anything about this guy let's just avoid him Maybe wrong. Maybe mainstream will cover him a little bit, but uh, I think they'll probably keep him at arm's length if they do it at all. We'll find out. This one's called. What's this one called? Uh, Departure reason. Fe conference. Go figure. Mark. Respect. All caps. To thine own self be true. That's from Frank. Awesome, Frank. Thank you for that. This one's called. Uh, my trip to Fantasyland. Mark, I thought I would share a few pics from my trip to Fantasyland a couple of years back. I feel so special that I was able to, to touch a fake moon rock. Uh, movie quote, sorry, I, I blew up your mom, Ricky. <laughs> Hint, I want my $2. Keep up the great work. Best, uh, FK. And uh, yeah, uh, that's from um, uh, Better Off Dead which is a great John Cusack movie. Two dollars. Do you should look that up on, on YouTube if you get a chance. There's some great it's a it's a great it's a great fun 80s ski movie and it's it's a great uh, John Cusack breaking out into his own stuff a movie which I loved. Uh, okay, this one's called Effie Conference. Bravo for your stance. Hi, Mark. I've been following you for a few years now. This is the first time I've emailed any more regarding Flat Earth still in the closet. Your response to Logan Paul's involvement is to be commended. Moreover, this idiot's involvement in the conference is going to have a devastating fallout on the movement. Uh, good on you for your stance. Blessings from Australia, Trevor. I don't know if it's going to hurt us that much because I don't think he's going to get enough media attention. Uh, I don't. Uh, it, there's the potential. I mean, yeah, if he takes his final shot, remember, we're, we're waiting for uh, him to f do the final the final backhand because everything he, he strung he strung us along. And most of the, by that, I mean, he strung Robbie along because Robbie was the one that was keeping the secret pretty much the entire time, which was, oh, okay, you guys didn't, can't do any publicity of us coming because we're going to do it. So you got to keep the secret. You can't tell anybody. And then and he, that was delayed and delayed. It's like, okay, we're not going to do any publicity at all. It's like, okay, well, why didn't we keep the secret if, to the conference? They literally promoted nothing. In fact, I'm waiting to see if they talk about it on social media at all. Uh, we'll see what they get with YouTube. And then it's like, okay, but we're definitely coming to your mixer, the VIP mixer. 
uh, that you know people paid for, and I was there, <laughs> and so was everybody else that was in the in the speaking department. We were all there, and he was like, "Oh, we'll be late." Remember, we still didn't know who this guy was. We're going to be late. We're going to be really late. We're not going to show up, and but we're definitely going to be there tomorrow morning for for the Thursday to the conference, and we're going to stay there all day and do stuff and. Uh, from what I understand, he hung around a bit, but I do not know many people that talked to him. It was He was tough to pin down, and then he didn't do stuff with us in the evening. Pretty sure he didn't, he didn't stay for the award show, and we'll see if he's got any follow-up back in Los Angeles. That's what I'm also, it's like he was also said that he was going to turn this into something uh, kind of like Jared Yaw did, but Jared Yaw actually stuck to his word, otherwise known as uh, uh, Shane Dawson's brother. You know, he actually had people come out to Los Angeles and we shot stuff with him and he's a small channel by comparison. So anyway, thank you for that, Trevor. Uh, let's see. This one's called, we're, I think hopefully we'll get off some of these. We're, there will be more, as you know, uh, conference stuff, but we're going to try to pump through them. Uh, this is called NASA Upload to YouTube in the last day of FEIC 2018. Hi, Mark. You did well by leaving Denver earlier. Please have a look at what NASA uploaded to YouTube on the second day of FEIC 2018. It seems it's now 50 years later that they will go to the moon and will stay there. This is not about flags and footprints. It's about science. Enjoy and continue your excellent work. Best, uh, Rui. And let me check out the, the name of the video. I won't play it. It's actually on the NASA channel, literally called NASA. It's called We Are NASA, published November 16th, 2018. Wow, you're right. They actually did, did that. And NASA, you know, their their channel has 2.8 million subs. And uh, it's a propaganda piece about We Are NASA. Oh, wow. Wow, I may have to save that one. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. This one's called Los Angeles Awards. Uh, regarding the flat, flatty wood, flat, flat Academy awards. I'm uh, hi, Mark. I'm organizing my own awards show because your research team didn't even get an honorable mention at the stinky FE conference. Firstly, you're getting an award for supporting us being at Salton and mirroring our work. I wondered if you might want to either be here to host with me or be in remote by video. It's if it's not okay. Uh, I'm not sure how you feel, but it'll be my little protest uh, against how the conference was run and how our team is so excited to get awards. Uh, also, I'm wondering if you might know any A or B list celebrities who might want to make an appearance and sh uh, in the conference. Someone told me, you know, oh, I'm not going to mention that. Uh, if I know A-listers. Yes, I do. Uh, if you're interested, just let me know, okay? Uh, Wendell is helping me organize, and we would like to do Hangouts uh, call with you to brainstorm. And also, here's the sparkle hat that I was going to force you to wear. Uh, you got lucky uh, because I lost it. <laughs> well, okay. Uh, to be fair, look. I, no, we mentioned the Salton Sea experiments. Yeah, I've mirrored the stuff, and, and I've talked about it many, many times. And the Salton Sea did wonderful experiments. No, and and here's here's the surprise for you guys is that National Geographic graphic who should have released their piece by now um i just finally are getting the early word sort of like we did with cbs and their piece that they are finally going to air uh the whole segment on flat earth and uh i think it's going to be on national geographic explorer um show on on network tell well whatever television not probably on their network obviously national geographic so you will get a lot of credit for that D just wait that's coming no worries uh but as far as uh, yeah of course i'd love to help you host whatever award show but don't think you were jilted or or, or as as far as the the flatty awards uh they were just you were not you were part of the nomination no question but we weren't reading off nominees at the awards and the uh the lake balaton um experiment Experiments series was was better. I'm sorry, you guys did a great job, fantastic. But Lake Balaton was better. I mean, you're talking about people that got several people that got pneumonia flying to another country and spending hours next to a frozen lake with military grade lasers in the middle of the night. They they spent a lot of time, you know, and stuff doing it. You guys did great though, fantastic. I'm never ever ever gonna say that you, you weren't deserving of something. But we had a lot. You know, it's part of what Flat Earth does. We do a lot of experiments, and you did a fantastic job. Anyway, that's from Sydney Silver. If you haven't already figured that out, and hopefully she's listening to this, and you know what, I'll put this in the pile of things to do so that she, in case she's not listening to the show, she won't she won't miss it. Uh, this one's called Admirable Choice. Hi, Mark. We have spoken a few times on your radio show, and I thank you so much for taking the time and commenting on my channel, which is CC 
short for Christopher Connell. Mark and everyone understands this VIP <laughs> does nothing. He put question mark next to it. Does nothing for the truth and can't be trusted. Thanks for your explanation and much work appreciated. That's from Christopher. Uh, thanks, Cece. I uh, look. I, my, again, what my father told me a long time ago, if you can do something, do it. Don't just stand there. Don't, don't wring your hands. You know, if you have the energy to complain about it, you have the energy to take action. And, uh, if, is, you know, if your convictions are there, you should act on them. And that's what I do. I've done it with everything. It's not just this. It's all sorts of stuff over the years. I am one of those guys that will take action. And I, and again, I am sorry that I was, um, I didn't tell anybody before I left, uh, but that's not exactly true. If anyone remembers all the people that I was sitting at the dining room table with uh, right after we found out uh, in, in the hotel restaurant, I ranted for a good solid hour and I was getting reactions from nobody. Nobody it was not resonating with people. Either they had forgotten or they didn't know who he was. I was one of the few people that had actually done research on the guy earlier in the year and, uh, and made a, a very strong opinion about him. And it was, I mean, I had a, a good, good chunk of the speakers there, you know, friends of mine, and it just was not resonating. So I, it was my version of, uh, you've seen it in movies, that gag where you run, you know, someone runs into a, a crowd of people. It's like, we got to get out of here. Right. And they yell and nobody's doing anything. It's fine. And so you're looking around. So you just pull a gun out and you start, you know, firing shots into the ceiling. Then they start moving. Uh, in this case, I didn't have a gun to pull and, and shoot into the ceiling. So I did the next best thing. I was like, look, I'm serious. And people don't, if they don't understand your conviction, you have to make them understand. I was like, no, I'm absolutely serious. And if that means I have to lose a lot of things to do this, I mean, again, I gave up all my interviews, all the documentary stuff that I had scheduled, had give, gave it all up. Uh, including, you know, the wonderful award show that I, that I spent a lot of time on, uh, and I, again, that's probably the, the person that I'm, I'm, I'm most sorry about is, is Patricia because, you know, she wanted to, you know, she likes everything to be perfect. And I knew, of course, you know, she's the main part of, of the award show. Uh, she is the award show. I mean, she, she overshadows me in all, all aspects. Uh, but I knew that any MC and, and Rick was a fine choice, uh, but there would have been no shortage of people that, that would have gone up on stage with her and, and, uh, and done it. So I'm glad it turned out okay. This one's called Need Flat Earth Christian Fellowship. Hi, Mark. My name is Kathy. I live in Lafayette, Louisiana, and I'm hoping that you know of people in the general area that I can connect with for Flat Earth Christian Fellowship. I saw on your website that there's a group around New Orleans, which is about two and a half hours away. The video didn't really explain to me how to hook up with them. However, I'm over 60 and perhaps didn't understand what to do. Uh, if possible, please send me information that you can. I would be very much appreciated. Thanks, Kathy Palmer. Okay, so there's a group, uh, there's a group around New Orleans, about two and a half hours away. All right, I got to figure out how to get her the info. Hopefully, I, I can do that pretty quick. So let's see, this one's called, have you seen this thousand year old map? That's from Carl. Uh, yes, I have seen the thousand year old map. In fact, the first people to do it was uh, find it was actually Chris and Cherie Geo from True Frequency Radio. And yes, uh, also I should mention that because again, I'm going to be doing uh, an email show today and an email show tomorrow and probably an email show uh, Tuesday morning. And then I'm going to do Strange World on Tuesday night and I will have the phone lines open. And if anyone wants to call in and uh, comment on, on the conference or whatever, be more than happy to take the call. Just so you know, I, I am not filtering out these emails. I have not gotten a single, there is a troll email coming up, but it doesn't have anything to do with the, um, with the conference. Uh, I hardly ever get troll emails at all. And when it comes to conference, I have gotten nothing. I've gotten no bad voicemails and uh, no negative emails so far. If you want to be the first, great, fantastic come at me. Love to hear it. Love to hear how you want to justify that. This one's called Eddie from Winnipeg. Oh, she was great. I loved meeting her. She came down. Uh, Dear Mark, I'm grateful that I got to shake your hand on Wednesday just before the FE convoy to the Billboard Adventure. And also so uh, very grateful that you took the time to introduce me to wonderful people who took me under their wing. I felt amongst family immediately. I also got to speak with you, although I teased you a little at the mixer while the scumbag admired himself in the mirror. 
uh, as my personal hero, personal hero, I'm uh, in leaving. You have only demonstrated tremendous integrity in an entirely ludicrous situation, and somehow I already knew the uh, the incredible bravery I so admire. Thank you. Um, I'm one of thousands of emailers. I understand completely. Should I not receive a reply? Warmest regards, Eddie. P.S. Don't stop singing with Zulu. It's priceless, and I love it. Uh, that's because she also said I was a terrible singer, which wasn't great to say, but that's fine because uh, I, I sing um, uh, the first line of New York, New York. Well, the first couple lines of New York, New York, uh, when Zulu from uh, New York calls. It's just a routine we do. This one's called For What It's Worth. Hi, Mark. Uh, for what it's worth, I back you full on the Logan Paul issue. If I had managed to save up the money to go to the conference, I would have been beyond disappointed. Segway, he's dross. D-R-O-S-S, -S, dross. It's a noun. Uh, one, uh, something regarded as worthless or rubbish. There are bargains if you have the patience to sift through the dross. Synonyms, rubbish, junk, debris, chaff, draft, detritus, Flotsam and jetsam. I'd heard of all of those except for detri detritus, detritus, D E T R I T U S. Never heard that word. Uh, two, foreign matter, dregs. I've heard of dregs. Or mineral waste, in particular, scum formed on the surface of molten metal. <laughs> Alchemists tried to create gold from dross. Uh, anyway, that's from, uh, who's that from? That's from Rob. Thank you, Rob. And yeah, I completely agree. And, and also, I got to mention, I'm going to include a clip. I will only do it once, but I will include a clip in the beginning of the Strange World episode on YouTube, which is a, uh, a just a little, not even, I think it's a 45 second segment from Jacqueline, I uh, can't remember her name off the top of my head, but she's a big YouTuber, big female YouTuber. In fact, one of the bigger female YouTubers at 750,000 subs. One of Logan Paul's peers, and she has made, I, I remember her because, well, it's hard to forget that color hair, uh, but she made a video against Flat Earth early in the year, and she's coming back. Remember, she is a globalist who does not like Flat Earth, and she's saying, guys, you're not doing yourself any favors by, you know, she was, she was actually taking uh, taking our side in this. It's like, look, no offense, but you can't you can't bring him into, into your argument because he's just going to, he's going to hurt you. So anyway, this one's called Survival Guide from Carson K. Hey, Mark, I'm sure you've gotten lots of emails about the Denver conference. I don't know who this Logan character even was. I don't know how Robbie thought that having him would be a good thing for him, the conference and the flat earth at large. I was super bummed you weren't there. But after finding out who this guy was and the fact that he crossed a line with making a spoof video of the suicide victims, not okay. His whole thing that he does is not okay. He's a troll of the highest degree. So how could anyone come out uh, of having him at the conference if Robbie hadn't been secretive about it there you go someone would have spoke up and voiced how bad of idea it would be to have him there and the whole situation could have been prevented <laughs> yep <laughs> yep I hear you there uh, I totally understand why you left anyways just a word of encouragement from someone who also doesn't care one bit for this Logan kid stay flat Carson yep yep it, it was a, b a bad bad secret okay here is a troll email right I hardly get any of them and, you know, I'm not supposed to feed the trolls, but they're so rare. I have to point it out. Um, uh, it's called, you are effing stupid. And, and no, there's no context here. Just to say this in my own language, J-Y is posedome. J-Y is P-O-E-S space D-O-M. I don't know. Someone look that up. Whatever language, I'm, I'm, it's, looks, it's European. Uh, I have no words for you, just you're a effing joke and you're stupid. And you used the wrong year. Uh, go kill yourself. Perfect. Awesome. Love that. Uh, the And it's from Eben van der M-E-R-W-E. And I'll give you his email address just for the heck of it. That's E-B-E-N-V-D. M97 at gmail.com. I would imagine 97 is birth date, which would make him, was that 20, 21? Hmm. Could be a Logan Paul fan. I don't know. There's no context. I actually wrote him back. I did. Because it's, look, if you're going to troll me, give me something. Give me some context. This is, it's, it's too random. I don't know what it's about. Sorry. 
All right, this one's called Flat Earth. Hi, Mark. I am new to this subject. I have a couple of questions. One, if the Earth is flat and not moving, what is it that creates ocean currents and tides? Two, how do we explain plate tectonics if we are on a rigid structure? Very much enjoy your videos, Gary. Uh, number one, uh, ocean currents and tides are created by some molecular magnetic force that's below us. It's not the moon. Two, plate tectonics on a rigid structure. Who said it was a rigid structure? Uh, oh, that's right, because if it's flat, it's rigid, right? It doesn't, doesn't mean, just because it's flat doesn't mean you can't have plate tectonics. It just means the tectonics are on some sort of flat enclosed structure. You can still have them. Not that hard. But I know it's the conditioning. Okay, this one's called, Dude, what the heck? Uh, Mark, okay to read on air, recommend reading on QA94 since it's still related to FEIC 2018. It'll be fresh in our minds. Okay. Just heard your QA emails 93 where you discussed the conference problems. I just had a few comment, comments. Uh, someone once said, Robbie gets starstruck and you don't. Uh, yes, it appears that way. And while Robbie is owed tons of gratitude for putting these conferences together, I agree. Uh, I would highly recommend, and he said that in all caps, that you make decisions as a group, <laughs> steering committee or core conference group, etc. This is going to be even more and more important in the future as real A-listers start uh, coming to these conferences. FE is going to blow up in the near future, so please put a guidance system on the FE projectile. Ooh, I like that reference. I wanted to thank you for all your hard work. Your hard work, dedication, and tireless pursuit of the promotion of the FE concept is truly remarkable. I have met very few people who are so as dedicated as you. Wow, I was stunned to hear you had taken two red-eye flights to leave the Bellingham Festival, then attend one evening in Little Rock and fly back to continue more work back in Washington State. It is obvious you put your heart and soul in that all you do. Uh, this conference fiasco, if you can call it that, is only a further testament to your conviction and your beliefs and values. You've earned the respect of many more people in what you did, but why didn't you read the angry emails in QA93? Did you get no angry emails? Uh, I'll answer that before I get to the, his last paragraph. No, I haven't. I haven't gotten a single angry... Well, unless you count that guy from wherever, the Netherlands, but he has no context. I don't think it has to do with the conference. He just called me an effing idiot. Uh, and that, I actually, that's that's usually reserved more for the, the comment sections, but whatever. Uh, and last but not least, please start or continue to get, uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, and, and, sorry. I, I didn't, I'm not going to read the last part. It has to do with my um, personal issues with uh, the whole um, suicidal tendencies. Because uh, again, I, you know, I come off as a happy, wonderful guy, but, uh, I shouldn't say wonderful, happily, wonderfully pleasant guy. Like, I'm not going to call myself wonderful. Uh, but at the same time, uh, look, if you have uh, the more, uh, I, you could probably plot a graph on this. If you have the more passion and conviction you have with things, um, you get very low lows and, you know, there's moments that, ugh, I've had some some dark times, which is weird because you'd think uh, like during my uh, my like my federal convictions back in the day, but I was so young that I, I still considered myself fairly bulletproof. Uh, not so much not so, not so much anymore though. Mortality is a bitch. Uh, anyway, take car, Sarge, and that's from uh, Jack. Thank you, Jack, for that. It's it's uh, very much appreciated. Okay, this one's called. I'm sorry, guys. There, there's there's going to be quite a few of these before it's over. Uh, let me see if I can paste this in. Hang on one second. Okay, this one is called "You Did the Right Thing," uh, dear Mr. Sergeant. I have watched, read, and listened to your podcast as well as your Flat Earth Clues videos and your dialogues with Mr. Skiba on YouTube. I truly feel that you have come to a much more biblical and faithful position vis-a-vis uh, -vis the scriptural account of the wor world, her place in God's design, and who are God's enemies in the present age than many that uh, include uh, blah, blah, blah. And, uh, so he's not a huge Rob Skiba fan, which is interesting. He's valuing my stuff. While you stated, while your stated reasons on the YouTube video, Flat Earth Conference, Denver, Logan Paul, and why Mark Sargent left are not strong enough to make me believe you're telling all the truth. I and a few others surprisingly concur with your basic banning of a member of, uh, okay, I see what he says here. Uh, I was surprised as anyone to read Andrew Angelin even covering the concept of FE 
when when two years or more ago when he was still on normal online channels and accepting comments and and took him to task for insulting fe ad advocates as i was investigating the fe paradigm myself let alone siding with you albeit not for perhaps the same reasons nevertheless i just wanted to let you know what i think you did was correct uh, so many institutions of the west have been corrupted co-opted and taken over by members of uh this okay i see may god in christ richly bless your life sincerely um john uh john i think it's john pastor okay so i want to make this super clear i, I don't necessarily endorse his views at all because for a reason uh this man obviously is anti-semitic but that should give you kind of an idea uh the <laughs> people the this this anti-semitic guy is is actually backing uh, my my decision to to walk out on in this case because um, he he hates uh, Logan Paul for a completely different reason uh, probably because I think he thinks he's Jewish I don't know Logan Paul did not come off as a as a Jewish guy staring at him I'm not exactly sure I mean the guy's six probably six two pretty big guy and I he looked very kind of he and his brother look pretty Aryan to me but i don't know maybe but it's really weird but the point is, is like even that guy it's not a good sign when an anti-semitic group is actually agreeing with you i probably shouldn't know oh, anyway uh moving on this one's called 90 mile beach australia hi mark i'm a fellow flat earther from south africa thanks for the effort and time you guys make uh, people aware that they are not just a speck of dust, but that the world, sun, moon, and start was made just for us in our space underneath the dome. One wonders if any more proofs will change anybody's mind, as there is always al already lots of proofs around, but I have a fairly easy-to-do test that will be unrefutably and unrefutably and repeatable. I think you, sh you should say unrefutable and repeatable. I'm not trying to do grammar. Um Proofing the, the sea is flat over a 90 mile distance. It's not uncommon for the earth to be flat in certain areas because that can happen on a ball earth too, but the sea cannot be flat and has to settle on a mean sea level. Let me know if you think we should pursue something like this. It wouldn't cost that much and could cause a nice stir. Kind regards and hope to hear from you soon. Uh, you can also what's up me at phone number. That's from Martin, chief mind surveyor. Hmm. Yeah, interesting. I'll have to give that one some thought. This one's called Air Travel Question. Mark, just to preface, I'm not a flat earther. I'm just curious and entertained by all conspiracy theories. I'm also not a troll, so I'm civil unlike some and would try not try to dispute what you say publicly. I've been watching your Clue series and I've gotten to six before I started looking at Expedia. The screenshot below is what I found about this uh, about the time Clues Part 7 started. I see that the video is three years old, so maybe something has changed. Now, there you go. But I'm seeing you can get from Australia to South America quicker than Australia to the USA. That fits the globe model over the flat earth map you show. Have you addressed this type of thing since the original video? Yes, I have. I still plan on, and so have a lot of other people. I still plan on watching the rest of the clues videos and behind the curve. Oh, good. So I may have more questions in the future. Thanks, Chris. Yeah, again, the behind the curve, uh, I still recommend it as a great rec I don't recommend it to flat earthers, even though I know you'll probably watch it. But if you, I totally recommend it to send it to brand new globalists or people that are just getting into this because it really is a is a is a nice balanced take. It keeps you engaged and it throws up puts a lot of questions in your mind. It really really does a great job at planting the seed. If you're a hardcore flat earth member though that has been in over six months and you've heard me say this before you're not gonna like it you're just not because it, it is not a, a victory lap movie it is it is it was never intended to be it's made by a globalist but uh i thought it was pretty good uh this one's called 12 slides all right then i'll jump back down to september stuff 12 slides uh mark family getting together for thanksgiving and birthday birthdays i need slides some members of my family get really upset that's from lisa and i sent her the 12 slides just a few minutes ago and everything was great for that and we are scrolling down and it's taking its freaking time let's call let's just grab this one and we're waiting and we're waiting and the wheel of death 
Okay, this one, uh, we're just grabbing some random stuff because the, the server's giving, giving me some problems. Uh, but you know what? This one's pretty good. I didn't even, I just clicked on it, didn't even look at the title, and guess what it is? FEIC A lister guesses. And this was back in on the 6th. Uh, hi, Mark. My 12 year old granddaughter, Jalen, and I enjoyed listening to the show tonight. She was excited to figure out who the A lister will be at the conference. Here are our best guesses Justin Timberlake. Yep. Adam Levine, Zach Efron, or Usher. So there you go. That, Justin Timberlake was a guest back on the 6th. So that predates the Hori, uh, the Hori guess from there. And here's a quote from you from Jalen. If plan A fails, remember, you have 25 more letters left. Oh, that's good. She didn't know who said it. Have a safe trip at the conference, keeping it flat in Oregon, uh, Reggie and Jalen. Yep, thank you for that. I'm just going to start grabbing stuff all over the place. Let's grab some some of the 12 slides. Uh, this one's called 12 slides. Hey, Mark, appreciate you've already probably been inundated with this. But if you have time, could you please forward me the 12 slides to convince people? Thanks, Dominic. Yep. The 12 slides are from just Jack. This one's called flat earth. Mark loved your flat earth sermon. They say there is a continent below the South pole. Is that true? That's from Spencer. I, I think there's a whole bunch of continents outside of this place. I think it's necessarily below the South pole. I think there's, I think it's just out on the plane somewhere. This one's called Vacuum Vid. And it was sent by Dave Tanner, and it's NASA scientists discover spacesuits blow up in vacuums. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. Uh, again, that was supposed to be part of my presentation. That's why I bought the freaking basketball, had it sh shipped there, and then had everybody sign it. I was going to give it away during my session. Because it is uh, it's a great pressure demonstration, which is why it does a basketball or anything that you pump air into act the way it does. It's because of pressure, plain and simple pressure. It is, you want to, you want to grab, grab somebody's attention with a flat earth. That's how you get to explain it. It's like, okay, why does a basketball stay pressure? Why does it stay firm? Uh, and that's because there's more air inside it, more atmosphere inside it than outside it, right? It's just basic, basic physics. And that is the molecules. There's more molecules inside and they're trying to get out. They're trying to equalize. It's trying to get out and, and the outside is trying to pull them out. And that's why it, it's like that. And everything, a pressure needs a container. And that's straight out of Nathan Oakley. I love using that reference. He, he said, pressure needs a container, period. If it's a hard container, then it, it creates stress like the fuselage of an aircraft, right? Or a can of spray paint or hairspray, right? It just creates stress on the outside of it. If it's a soft container, it will expand it until it fills it up and then it becomes firm. Then it becomes a solid container. Everything from a basketball to a soccer ball to a football to any you know, car tire, you name it. And even if you have just a little bit of pressure, the closer it gets to a vacuum, like a weather balloon, when you take, remember, when a weather balloon goes up, it's just a little bit of atmosphere in the, in, or sorry, a little bit of helium, but it's still, we'll call it atmosphere, a little bit of helium in that thing. And by the time it gets up even close to a vacuum, that weather balloon expands as tight as a freaking drum and then detonates. That's the whole point. And because so if anyone comes back and so there's only two th objects I even know of that don't fall into this law. One is the miracle spacesuit, which apparently doesn't act like there's any pressure at all. I tell me the technology involved there. And the other one is the globe because the globe doesn't have a container. So if you imagine the globe as a basketball being held in your hand, the atmosphere just like this wispy, smoky thing on the outside of it, and the rest of that room is a vacuum, tell me how the basketball wins. Tell me how the basketball keeps the atmosphere on there. Can't. Doesn't. No way. No how. Moving on. We're just gonna, I'm just going to start picking random ones. I'm not even going to start from the bottom. I'm just going to grab any ones I can. Uh, this one's called Fishbowl. Hi, Mark. I responded to a video you posted with. Glass ceiling is not a dome shaped, but fishbowl with flat plane. In other words, one giant spirit level. Ooh. Before we question why, we must accept this shape and level our spirit. Then we make room to search for answers. I would like to know your thoughts on this. Even more, when looking at a high precision spirit level, the ones with the air bubbles, which you have to get into the center of a sort of bullseye, that would be impossible with the earth spinning, would it? Yes, it, yes, it would be impossible. It's unbelievable the amount of stuff they throw at you in the education system and that they manage to convince me. I remember sitting in a classroom at the age of 14 and asking the teacher if, I were to take a spirit level, would I need to support it going forward as I try to level it? To which came some scientific answer about gravity and the assumption on his part that I must think the world is flat and tells me to be careful not to fall off. Anyway, I hope you have a good day, Matt. Yeah, yeah, good stuff. 
English wasn't the best, but we'll deal with it. This one's called Buildings. Mark, can you address the phenomena that a globe Earth does not account for? Being tall buildings appearing to point straight upwards from many different miles away when viewed through a high-range telescope. In other words, not leaning away at an oblique angle from the line of sight due to an alleged curvature of the Earth. Yeah, great point. And that is, uh, which we really haven't even addressed with the long-distance infrared experiments, which is if you're looking long distance, really, really long distance, like four, 500 miles in, into a, like an area of a city, those buildings should be angling away from you. And we don't see that. We're not even talking about that yet. We're, uh, we're just so amazed that we can see stuff with advanced infrared technology. Uh, moving on, this one's called Spacesuit Theory. Hey, Mark, one pollination here. I think that's his YouTube channel. I've been thinking about the spacesuit problem. Here's what I thought. I get your idea with the basketball. Wow, isn't that weird? Because I had even, I don't remember the last time I talked about the basketball. So here's my idea. Spacesuits, have, oh, here we go. Have a layer of nano ball bearings. <laughs> yeah, that are lubricated with something. So the suit would be, in fact, be, but be stiff, but, but easy to move due to no friction. Hope that it com comes across okay. Cheers, Paul Sinclair. And uh, no, 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 no. Here's why. So you can you can make that suit as flexible as you wanted. I remember all 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 fabrics are flexible. Uh, I don't care what you make it out of. Uh, you can make it a mylar if you wanted. But it, you, any fabric you want, it doesn't matter. The problem is the shape of the suit. The shape of the suit is no different than a balloon. You know, a balloon is round because it, it comes in a round shape. But once you pump air into anything, it takes up this, the the suit it takes that shape, right? So if it was an empty spacesuit, you pump air into it, it would it would be a, a base, basically a spacesuit balloon. I'm sorry, I'm moving my arms around. So if you hear the microphone go away, it's because I'm being animated, even though I'm not on video. So it's weird. So what happens is if you try to push that arm down, it's going to pop back up because it, it wants to go into the, the natural shape of the suit. Well, every time you do that, there's resistance. And so what I'm saying is, yeah, you could get your arms and legs in there, uh, but that suit is going to be fighting you at all times. It, it, you're basically inside a balloon and you, it, you're going to have to ex exert some extreme effort all the time. That suit will always try to go into its its original shape. And you're going to, again, it's the, the joke from uh, A Christmas Story where the kid is in all those ski clothes, right? And he's literally just stuck in one position. He's like, I can't put my arms down. That's You would have to fight this this entire time. We never saw it. The astronauts are completely flexible. And forget forget about the arms and legs briefly. Even if you could fight your way and, and make your arms and legs move, your fingers would be useless. Your fingers don't have nearly enough, enough uh, muscle power. And they're doing complex electronics. They're doing, you know, hooking up satellite dishes and wiring all sorts of antennas and and every and all the experiments. How are you doing that? You can't. They just glossed it over. They said, you know what? No one's going to notice. No one's going to remember the physics issue about pressure. And they didn't because we don't really stress that in in school. We we teach basic things in school. You know, um, basic arithmetic and geography and um, uh, social studies and stuff like that. We don't, we don't teach. Only the nerds know the stuff about the, the pressure. And so it was missed. It was like, and once we saw it on video, oh, the astronaut's walking around. Nobody questioned. I'm sure there was in the back of some nerd's mind, they're going, huh, I wonder how they solved that pressure problem. They never did. But there weren't enough of them to speak out about it. So there you go. All right, we're moving on. Let's grab some more. How, how about uh, FE beginners? Good morning, Mark. I am a recent FE convert, but first a brief background. I'm a career carpenter uh turned estimator i've been estimating a couple of years now usually as an estimate i listen to youtube about 60 percent of the time i'm a christian so i listen to a variety of subjects and then i've been following participating in the truth movement for about a decade now specifically when i started attending gracebible.com about 10 years ago at that time i met some brothers that dropped some dvds on me regarding 9 11 vaccine false prophets uh, my eyes were opened red pilled so to speak so anyway as the youtube menu would pop up on the right and i would always cruise past the flat earth doc documentaries i mean come on it's i'm not crazy i'm just a conspiracy theorist as i am often called so about a month ago i opened one and listened i think it was eric dubay but i'm not sure needless to say my firmament dome was opened up and the truth poured in just when you think you know it all just kidding but you get the point i was at my youngest daughter's house last weekend building her chicken coop in her backyard and it occurred to me 
to mention my recent experience conversion to her and my son-in-law. Let's just say they were skeptical, not vocally, but I could see it in their faces, and yet they were respectful. I mean, I am still dad after all. My daughter is a believer, but she had never even heard of a flat, still-domed earth. My question to you is, what info documentaries should I send to my daughter and son-in-law to get them off on the correct foot? Mark, I appreciate your courage and diligence. Keep up the good work. God bless Steve-O. And you know what? I am going to send him, you know what I'm going to send? I'm going to send him the Behind the Curve documentary link. So, because again, it's a great, if, it's, if they're not into it at all, so what a great thing to start. Uh, this one's called, what? Hang on. This one's called It's Over. Hi, Mark. It's been a great run. It had to come to an end sometime after reading this article about the Japanese asteroid mission. <laughs> right. Uh, Fox News. a Fox News thing. I'm turning in all my FE gear. Yeah. Asteroid rover send back study new pictures space rock surface the two biggest points that prove it's true is first fox news open comments on a space article and two the pics were taken on my birthday they would never lie to me on that day you know i'll be glad when they finally use some of this awesome space wi-fi here on earth uh when we can finally get some decent bandwidth <laughs> isn't that the truth great show keep up the good work stay flat and big shout out to zulu one uh shauna and brian night school is a fun show and that's from bill duke yeah good stuff and yeah don't discount the bandwidth issue that's another thing on the moon and that is they're shooting they're sending back live live color pictures or black and white if you if you want to go that route but i know there was colors supposedly there and they were they're shooting back 30 frames a second with a with a transmitter i think it was a vhf transmitter that only had a 50 mile range even though there was a 250,000 mile or i'm sorry 237,000 mile distance between the earth and the moon if you believe that and they're shooting they're, they're sending back 30 frames a second with what technology what 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 1969 what technology are you using to send back 30 frames a second with no no crashing with a with a little tiny dish with no power no po i mean 50 mile max max radius or a range on that and and you're you're firing off 30 frames a second sorry I, it was the year 2000 and i'm using a 28.8 modem and, uh, and 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 barely getting decent decent still shots. Oh my god, terrible, terrible, terrible. Uh, let's do a few more survival guides. Knock those out of the way. Uh, survival guide. Mark, something feels awry in the world today. Maybe it's time to start to prepare. Thanks, Mark. I hope this is the right email. Ha ha. That's from Lo funny Logan, freaking Logan Cook. Guy, man, is haunting me. Uh, this one's called 12 photos. Let's do that one. Hi, Mark. Can I get those 12 photos from just Jack? That's from Matthew. Yep. You bet. I will send those to you. This one's called quick thought. Hi, Mark. Love the work you've been doing. Just a quick thought. Is there a flat earth day? Uh, official, like a recognized flat earth day? No, not yet. I know there is an earth day for all those unawoken people out there, but if there isn't a flat earth day, it'd be good to have one to raise awareness and celebrate our lovely non-spinning ball place we call home let me know your thoughts thanks and keep up the good work andrew yep very 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 welcome uh we got a few more we can do here how about uh concealed carry purses for patricia mark just recently discovered your videos with patricia from 2015 you were talking about guns and concealed carry damsel in distress carries several styles of purses purses uh i don't say purses often because i'm straight uh, I have always disavowed, not that I'm judging all God's children. I have always disavowed NASA and the moon landings from the beginning. I was born in 1959, but I love science and math, and NASA never showed how the spacesuits would protect the astronauts in the vacuum of space, plus the extreme temperatures and how they carried enough oxygen and fuel to get on and off the moon. Never happened. From there, uh, I happened to cross, come across the flat Earth clues, but back in 1990, my ex, who was a land surveyor in the Army, showed me the skyline of Chicago. That is in many of your videos, but until your videos, I never all put it all together. As I approach 60 years old, I have also returned to the Bible and then saw Rob Skiba's videos. I can no longer believe in the globe earth. Thanks, Mary Waltz. P.S. I lost a lot of sleep doing, um, going through all these videos and your information. Yep, everybody does. It's, it's usually an average of about two weeks that uh, people have the go through problems. All right, this one's called what? creationists take on flat earthers mark here's a link to a conference held a couple of weeks ago i am just curious what you think could you pass this on to rob skiba i could not see how to contact him on email thanks and that's from dan and that email says or that the, the link is flat earth the bible and science say no 
And that's from Creation Ministries International, published September 5th. Ooh, 1,000 thumbs down, only 200 up. That's not a good sign. So we'll uh, get rid of that one. I have a thank you for that link. Uh, how many more can we do here? Let's do this one. Please send slideshow of proofs. Thanks. And that's from Dan Nola. Very welcome. This one's called Put My Money Where My Mouth Is. Okay. Uh, hey, Mark, I just spent a long weekend in Destin, Florida. There is a great Irish bar there called McGuire's, where the patrons over the years have left over one million single dollar bills with a handwritten message on them stapled everywhere. There are a few open sl spots throughout the establishment that new bills are showcased for a short period of time before being hung up on the ceiling lengthwise like a carpet of deep shag cash. I attached a photo of my bill's message stating Research Flat Earth, where... At least for a little while, that message will be front and center at the head of the bar. The bartender also promised to give uh, the clues a look at. Who knows? Might be enough to plant a seed or get the ball rolling. Looking forward to meeting you and many other Flat Earth heroes at the Flat Earth uh, uh, 18 during the November in De Denver to remember. Uh, keep it flat, New Orleans. Troy. And man, I hope I met you, Troy. I mean, I tried to meet as many people as I could on Tuesday or Wednesday. Uh, I, never, I never even went back to my room, really, for two days. And uh, so I met as many people as I didn't even talk to a few people as I was leaving on Thursday. Uh, do we have any more that we can read real quick? Do we have time? Let's do this one quick. Uh, this one's called Scientology and Flat Earth. Hi, Mark. I found your 12 clues about a year ago and ever since can't get enough on the subject. Everything seems to make more sense now that I relate it to Flat Earth. I have two questions for you. They have nothing to do with each other. First, I've always found uh, the religion of Scientology to be nothing but crazy, but do you think they know something? Eh, maybe? I don't know. Scientology is a tough one because of the, the guy that created it. But, you know, I'm not going to not gonna completely knock it. Be, I'm not going to completely knock it. Because uh, I start my morning with Flat Earth. So uh, they have been so out there in their theories and claiming to have secrets of the Earth and our existence. But only those who pay and become high-ranking Scientology members are previous to this information. Could it be that they know? Mm, doubt it. Second, you say the sun is electric and energy, uh, possibly a giant light bulb lighting our environment. How can you explain sunburns? if it's not a ball of fire, I can't seem to come to a reason why I'd be burnt by a giant light bulb. Uh, thanks and so much in advance for your time. Cheers, Allison from Canada. Uh, the second one, come on, really? Because uh, I, you can, there are tanning lamps. We, we can create that spectrum easily. Uh, grow lamps can give you a sunburn from what I know. I've just, we have all sorts of different light bulbs that can, that can create that. You don't need a ball of fire to do it. As a matter of fact, do you get a suntan? Ooh, we're a perfect example. Can you get a suntan from st sitting next to a campfire versus a suntan um, by a, a suntan bulb? Don't think you can get one from a campfire. I mean, yeah, you can get red, but I'm pretty sure you don't get a tan. If that was the case, people would be getting tans in front of their fireplace all the time. We're not going to end on that one. We got to end on something better. Uh, 12 slides, please. Aloha, Mark. I was wondering if you could send me those 12 slides from that AutoCAD guy. You can throw in the survival guide too. Moha Mahalo. Stay flat from across the plain. Cane thorns in Hawaii. Come on. We got, we got something better than that. What's a good one? Uh, Patricia told me to email you. Mark, I would like to send you a copy of my book, Flat Earth for Dummies 101. What address should I send it to? Enjoyed your show last night. For th thanks for taking my call. I look forward to calling it again. That's from Elaine. And yes, I got a chance to meet Elaine at the conference. And if you want to check her book out, it's flatearthfordummies101.com. Uh, it was really great meeting her and all the people there so far. Okay, we're going to end on that one. That seems like a really happy one. I was just happy that I got a chance to meet her before uh, I left. Uh, everyone that, that wrote in so far, I'm going to be kind of, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do these email uh, shows pretty much once a day until I get caught up and then then I can kind of get a, more of a handle on it, uh, So, I, which is why I'm kind of reading them as fast as I can, But and hopefully you guys don't mind that I'm putting up as many as I, as I do. So thank you for that, everyone that emailed. Everyone in the future, just send your things to msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T. 23 at comcast.net and until next time guys stay flat